I got eight hours and a few minutes of recording time on this new SanDisk 256 gigabyte SD card. Oh my, ida babushka. Zaka nisa hoy, chips ahoy. Welcome back to the channel. It's your Brooklyn goofball Sean. Yes, I said the Brooklyn goofball. Sometimes I just gotta be a little entertaining on camera. But nevertheless, even though this is about business, I still gotta have some sense of humor and not be stern most of the time. Welcome back to another episode of Side Hustle Inspiration. I am Sean, straight out of Flatbush, Brooklyn. Yes, 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 I am so happy. I gotta give myself a round of applause. I took a quick hiatus from recording because I had to once again step my game up. I got sick and tired of coming out to the park, shooting videos, and an hour or maybe a little bit over an hour getting the most out of the battery for recording time. I can't make it to an hour and a half on a standard GoPro battery. And I actually wondered if there was anything that could be done in terms of extending the recording or the battery lifetime. So I, I did a search in Google and um, I was looking for some things for the GoPro camera. Now that I got most of the accessories, got the remote control, got the microphone going. Um, I got the extended microphone in and I found this YOLO Tech juice box on a um, fishing website and I just couldn't believe it. I mean, it was just like, wow, I could record what? Over four hours? So I said, yeah, right. This thing is, yeah, right. I said, let me just see for myself. So I, um, I bought the YOLO Tech juice box. I paid $69.99 for it and uh, I'm happy. This is my first time running it. So I don't have to worry about the camera shutting off unless it gets hot because it is a little, I think it's over 80 degrees today. I am out here at Brandywine Zoo Park in Wilmington shooting this video. And I thank you all so much for your extended patience. I thank you to the past YouTube subscribers as well as the new YouTube subscribers. I thank y'all so much from my heart from the heart for hanging in there with me. I really 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 appreciate you. So this is it. Actually, let me just give y'all a quick let me see if I can sneak this clip in here. Hold on. I'm actually going to do this. There we go. Uh-huh. Y'all see it. So I'm, I'm, yeah, man, this is, woo wee. Look at here, look at here. I am so thankful and humble. Oh man, I don't have to worry about batteries anymore. I can use this juice box on the GoPro and my unused Sony A7 III, which I hopefully look forward to using sometime soon. I am happy. <laughs> Now I can hopefully make two and three hour videos in the near future, but hopefully this video will go for a little over an hour today. By the way, this is an official Quora Q&A question and answer video about affiliate marketing, about blogging, content marketing, and side hustles. And I'm really gonna go into debt I'm going to share my feelings. I'm going to share my viewpoint. Hopefully, I don't I hope nothing offensive comes out of my mouth, but in case it does, I repent to my YouTube audience in advance because I'm just that humble and I have been examining myself. I know for some people are watching. You're called foot soldiers. Go back and tell. Go back and tell on this video too while you're at it, snitch. 
Yeah, you know, but a bunch of snitches. Anyways, y'all know who I'm talking to. I ain't gonna say no names, but you know who I'm talking to. All right, so this is a, an official Quora question and answer video. Basically, people who want to know more about affiliate marketing, blogging, how content marketing works, um, and side hustles, they post questions in this particular niche to the question to I'm sorry to the Quora question and answer site and then what I do is I turn around and I answer their questions individually on video every time I pull out a camera somebody got to be around people always try to play it off they want to sit on park benches they want to act like they want to walk their dogs and be nearby like I try to be a little bit in a secluded area so because I'm just still a New Yorker at heart, I don't like a lot of people around me, especially, well, let me shut up because I'm going to say something offensive. I just caught myself. Then I, you know, then next thing you know, I'm going to have to deal with questions offline possibly. And I don't like people questioning me like that. So anyways, um, let me get on to the, <laughs> let me get on to the core questions and answers. Okay. Now this is going to be an extended video. So just hang in there get your little cup of tea get your soft drinks get a bag of chips make some sour cream you know with some you know some Lipton onion soup mix you're gonna be on here for a while watching me and by the ways I just want to thank everyone in advance whether you're a new YouTube subscriber a past subscriber I just want to thank everyone who's been taking the time to individually watch my videos whether I answer you or don't or whatever the case is Thank you anyways for watching my videos. Um, I have noticed that my YouTube watch time has been going up. And I myself have been trying to study here and there a little bit more about the YouTube algorithm so that I have a better understanding how the YouTube algorithm works. My channel could have been doing a lot better since it's now been ex in existence for a little over a year. But my problem is... I've been a little inconsistent with the videos and other things. So going forward from here, I tend to tighten up. Okay. All right. Moving forward. Excuse me. Let me go on to Cora question number one. Excuse me. Cora question number one says, how can I generate website traffic with zero marketing budget? <sighs> you, it can be done. But here's the thing. I am, in all honesty and truth, I am a hard line, and I say staunch, hard line advocate for making the sound investment in getting a domain name, acquiring your own www.com address, that's what a domain name is, and reserving dedicated web hosting or dedicated server for your online business. And once you have your dedicated server and your domain name, then that's where I would, you know, well, I would aggressively recommend installing WordPress because not only is WordPress free, but it's also the most powerful blog semantic publishing platform in the entire world. And with WordPress, there's thousands and thousands of free WordPress plugins, free and paid, that would enhance the functionality of your blog. But that's me. I would dearly recommend making that investment because once you have your own self-hosted WordPress blog on your domain, on your, I'm sorry, your, your dedicated server and your own domain name, that is your personal online real estate. I have preached this in many videos on my channel in the past in the recent past correction and that's your online real estate no one can take that from you like i said previously unless you threaten the president of the united states in a blog post unless you put up a pornographic image you can't be deleted because you're paying for the server and you're paying for your domain name that is your unique standalone voice but let me get back to the question because your question specifically says how can i generate website traffic with zero marketing budget number one youtube is the world's largest video search engine it's going to require you to take a shift you have to shift focus in your mindset up here um 
it was very hard for me in the infancy of my online marketing career and even up to today it's still challenging to stay consistent when it comes to certain things for example creating website content I my search engine rankings could have been doing a lot better but because I juggle the task of creating videos and website content, I tend to get a little inconsistent at times. I also have to remind myself, I am human and I can only do so much at once. Now, starting a YouTube channel and uploading videos, that's zero. Unless you want to make the sound investment and invest in a GoPro camera or a Sony, a Sony A7 series, whatever, um, whatever you want to do in terms of getting a camera that's an investment but if you just want to make a YouTube channel and start uploading videos that is zero that doesn't require a marketing budget if you don't have if you don't want to do I'm actually looking at my phone if you don't want to do a you if you don't want to do a paid you know like an investment in camera get a GoPro or a, a um, Sony or whatever other durable 4K reliable cameras, whether it's a Panasonic, a Leisha, a Hasselblad, um, a Blackmagic, um, Fuji, Olympus, Minolta, uh, Canon. If you don't want to get any of those brand cameras or even a um, Insta360. Insta360 is the GoPro's biggest competitor. And those little Insta 360s, those things cost money. They cost more money than GoPro. If you don't want to get any of those, get yourself just have your regular phone. But be mindful um, that you don't necessarily need 4K on your vi on your camera phone to start uploading videos on YouTube. But I heard now this is hearsay. I can't confirm or deny this. I heard. Allegedly, 4K videos rank better in YouTube search results. They also perform better in getting traffic, I guess because of the quality of the video. This is 4K. This is 4K, and I also have 5K on this camera. I can easily switch from 4 to 5K, but I choose not to do that because I think it eats up more memory. Um, I just leave the camera when I start filming. I leave this at 4, uh, 4K 30 FPS. That's it. I smell marijuana. Excuse me one second. I really do. I smell Rifa. I smell Rifa. Okay. I don't know where it's coming from, but I just had a whiff of marijuana flying through the air and just hit my nose like uh, good smelling cologne getting me in trouble on a past job it just hit my news anyways so creating a YouTube channel uploading videos posting videos regularly that doesn't require a marketing budget what it requires for you is this come up with a niche you're passionate about whether it's fishing whether it's um, mathematics if you know how to solve difficult math problems that's um, a good niche to start a YouTube channel around if you specialize in any other form of education whether it's computer science engineering um, aquatics um, um, weight loss tips whatever it is it doesn't require a marketing budget center the topic of your YouTube channel around those example niches if you find that that's a labor of love to you and you keep uploading videos and you're not making money guess what that's gonna flourish into a career keep going the thing I would recommend is this when you're uploading videos to YouTube which does not require a marketing budget don't look forward to making money right away from YouTube if you're adamant about making money from YouTube before being accepted into the YouTube partner program you can always promote affiliate links in the header center and footer description of your YouTube videos in other words your YouTube story section your story description where you have your contextual content you can include affiliate links in the story description pointing back to advertisers and you can make money that way by promoting affiliate links if one of your YouTube viewers clicks one of those affiliate links 
and they purchase something, you earn what's called an affiliate commission. You can do all of that with zero marketing budget. But again, it requires creativity. It requires dedication because, like I said, in the infancy of your YouTube career, you are not going to make money. Just forget it. I mean, do it because you want to do it. Um, there's going to be days where you don't feel like doing it, okay? Everybody goes through it. Even I go through it. I don't feel like doing a YouTube video today. But the, in the back of my mind, I know that there's millions and millions of dollars on YouTube waiting to be made. In, uh, what's, the, what's the word? In silence or in secrecy. Working from home. I said in silence and secrecy because no one has to know how much money you're making working from home. That's why I said silence and secrecy. Um, another way that you can generate website traffic with zero marketing budget is easy. Start a TikTok. There is so many people. I have seen many people make such jackass videos. I mean, utterly jackass. Like, what is the meaning of it? I just don't get it. What? I... You know, I sit there virtually doing it. I'm not physically doing this, but I'm like, what? what's the meaning behind that? And these clown jackass TikTok videos are driving um, hearts, I guess, likes. And these people are getting thousands and thousands of TikTok subscribers. And all that's required is just to have a link not in your video stories, but just a link in your TikTok on your profile and you drive traffic that way. That's it. But being that TikTok is so popular right now, there's so much money to be made and it's zero marketing budget. Again, this is all required is effort, time, creativity, and having a long-term vision. There's thousands and millions of dollars to be made on TikTok as well. So I would dearly recommend creating a free TikTok channel, profile, whatever it is, and start getting into the consistency of driving traffic using TikTok. Now, here's a marketing tip if you do one of those um oh gosh what do you call it lincoln bios lincoln bio websites whereas you put one link on your tiktok and if you, you, tiktok viewers click the link they'll see an array of links that you know that you put into a specific page so in other words one link could be going to your youtube channel another link can, can be can be going uh, is an affiliate link pointing to a travel based advertiser another link could be pointing to your self hosted wordpress blog another link can be pointing to your facebook profile to increase your friend requests another link can be pointing to your facebook fan page to drive new facebook fans to that page from tiktok all of that can be done on TikTok with zero marketing budget. Again, you have to want to do it because the money is there, the followers that are there, the YouTube subscribers are there. It's your choice. How can you generate website traffic with zero budget? You have YouTube. I just got finished discussing TikTok. Now, I don't mean this. Let's go on to Pinterest. And then we'll go on to something else. Pinterest is an image-based search engine. It is not a social network. A lot of people have it twisted that Pinterest is like Facebook. It's like uh, Twitter. It's not. It's an image-based search engine. Hello. You can bring the doggy over here if you want. I, I used to have dogs. <laughs> oh, you know what? They almost, they came up to me. They're right over around here somewhere. Yeah, just help yourself. Yeah. One came right up to me and almost touched my finger. Really? I'm actually making a YouTube video right now. Do you? No, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Yep. Unless you want to say hi to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want squirrels. 
every time I bring the camera out, people always want to come around. Everybody is freaking nosy. It this, this is like every time. If they don't walk by and gawk at me because I have a camera out, then they come up, they come close, they find a reason to come approach me, they bring the dogs. Last time I was at Rockford Park and I made a video, the guy brought the dog, he let his dog come up to me, kind of like nicely interrupted the video, which was cool, I didn't have a problem with it. I was playing around with the dog because I used to own a German Shepherd and a Beagle. And also uh, back in Brooklyn in the late, uh, I want to say 19, from 1982 to 1994, I had a German Shepherd. The Beagle ended up running away before I left Brooklyn. And then back in the late 70s, when I was coming into the world, I had a Doberman Pinscher. Her name was Cindy. And then I had a little poodle. Um, her name was Glenda. So that's a little bit about me. Anyways, let me get back to this video. So. Pinterest is an image-based search engine, and the beauty of Pinterest is those pins get indexed by Bing, Google, and Yahoo. They also get indexed by the Russian search engine Yandex. Now, even though the Russians are at war with, you know, the Russians are invading Ukraine, you still want to kind of optimize a little bit for the Russian search engine simply because um, Russian search traffic converts pretty good on Pinterest and if you have a blog a link to your blog in your Pinterest profile or if you have pins in your Pinterest um, pr uh, profile pointing back to your blog you know in the Pinterest URL story story section you know when they say add link add a link here to a, whatever you want a blog website or a YouTube channel if you have multiple links pointing back to your blog and your blog is optimized with Google AdSense that actually that Russian search traffic coming in from Pinterest converts well and it will actually increase your click-through rate for your AdSense ads but um yes yeah, so I don't I don't tell everything I know on video <laughs> but Pinterest is really really great it is zero marketing budget now you can do paid advertising and the paid advertising does work on pinterest you know oh man everybody wants to come you know people sneaky people sneaky um pinterest is an image-based search engine that requires zero marketing budget they came out the woodworks i'm telling you if i didn't have this camera nobody will probably come around me or then again if i had a female with me people would come around because they, they probably yeah she had to sneak a look i think she allegedly sneak snuck a look to see what i was doing mm -hmm. people so nosy <laughs> anyways um the more you post to pinterest with zero marketing budget the more free traffic that is tons of free traffic and sales pinterest is actually an image-based search engine and the purpose of Pinterest is not just to increase your online visibility. Pinterest actually wants you to make money off of them. Yes, they actually help you make money. They have a couple of free tools in the Pinterest, um, inside of your Pinterest account. Excuse me, one of the beneficial and the priceless tools Pinterest has in side of your dashboard that it requires zero marketing budget is it have an RSS function and if case you don't know what RSS means it is called really simple syndication really simple syndication is basically it's a line it's it's um, it's a line of code and what it does is every time you update your blog, your website, your YouTube channel with new content, the RSS feed, we call it an RSS, really simple syndication feed, will automatically update and pick up the content. And you can take this RS, this line of RSS, put it inside of your Pinterest account, and every time your blog, website, or YouTube channel updates, Depending on which category of pin boards you specify, this RSS feed 
Pinterest will actually pull the content from your RSS feed and will post the content to specific pin boards that you specify. So in other words, if I have a Pinterest account and I have, mm, let's say three pin boards, right? One is weight loss, one is side hustles, and the other one is maybe product reviews. Let's say I do a YouTube video, no, let's say I write a blog post about weight loss, right? I write a blog post about weight loss. I have the RSS feed from that specific category of my self-hosted WordPress blog inputted, uh, did I say inputted? Well, in, well, syndicated, inputted, whatever the word is. I have the specific RSS feed from the weight loss category section of my WordPress blog already inside of my Pinterest account. I have the RSS function inside of my Pinterest account set up, whereas any new blog posts from my blog discussing weight loss will be automatically pinned without me having to lift an extra finger to the weight loss Pinterest pin board. The result of that is I don't have to manually log in to Pinterest and post that content. There's an up and down to that. The pro is content is automatically syndicated without me having to lift an extra finger and post that content to Pinterest. And again, I'm doing this with a zero marketing budget. The con to it is it's duplicate content. So either way, if you're concerned about keeping your content natural, original, and you want the search engines to send you steady streams of traffic, you may want to go into that pin and edit the description of that pin and put in natural content that you haven't posted anywhere on the internet. So maybe take about five minutes to manually type in or use your speech recognition program to um, put some fresh content into that Pinterest pin because search engines could quietly penalize you in terms of you know your search engine rankings plummeting over the course of time if they notice excessive amounts of duplicate content if you have some duplicate content here and there uh, whether it's on a social network reposted to a social network or some duplicate content posted to your blog you won't be harshly penalized you may be penalized somewhat but if the majority of your blogs and your Pinterest pins are original content you're good all right um, so that's I covered YouTube I covered TikTok. I covered Pinterest. No, I'm not sticking up my middle finger to be vulgar on purpose. Now, let me go on to number four. Generating website traffic with zero budget. After, after you have made the sound investment, if you did, of investing in a um, domain name, dedicated server and you had your WordPress installed by your hosting provider or yourself now you need to hunker down you need to change the history of your human thought process and shift focus content marketing requires a zero marketing budget content marketing is you it is the business of you taking what's rambling in the back of your mind and you are now putting your thoughts your hopes, your dreams, whatever you want to write, as long as it, it is rated G. If a eight year old or a 10 year old can read it and get something good out of it, you're good. Re write something for all ages to read, enjoy, understand, and feel empowered from, please. Don't write anything stupid in a blog because your IP address can get you tracked down by the feds. You post the wrong things, you're going to jail. That's all I'm saying. Content marketing requires a zero marketing budget. Content marketing is the business of you. Taking your passion for whatever you love to write about, whether it's how to solve math problems, whether it's um, finding scholarship sources and making it easier for people to get hold of this information and apply for scholarships for their bachelor's master's or PhDs um, whatever it is sharing your thoughts about how you felt working on certain jobs 
you can write all of that stuff in a blog post. Blogging, content marketing, it requires a zero marketing budget. The only thing that is required of you is creativity, dedication, and writing lots and lots of content. Now, I'll give you a content marketing tip. Though it requires a zero marketing budget, you have to stay consistent because content marketing is a tedious process and it is not a game. Content marketing can make you really, really rich. Now, normally I joke around and I go, really, really rich. And I ain't going to go there with all that clown stuff today. But yes, content marketing can make you really, really rich. But you have to want to do it. This is not an industry where someone's going to stand over your shoulder and say, hey, did you write content today? You know, um, did you? are you going to write 2,000 word blog posts? Are you going to do that video? No one's going to tell you what to do in this line of work. You have to want to do it. But content marketing is a zero, zero marketing budget. Now, here's a tip. If you can f find yourself or if you can, you know, keep yourself motivated to blog five days a week in excess of 2,000. Now, normally I say 1,500 words or more, but we got this whole Russian invasion of Ukraine and soaring gas prices. And I don't know about y'all. I'm going broke, man. <laughs> if you can kick out 2,000 words a day for five days a week, you can get some more ad money. You can get more ad money, you can get more search engine traffic, and you can financially bulletproof yourself from these rising gas prices. Um, the reason why I say 2,000 words is because many individual bloggers are not going to sit at the computer and write 2,000 words a day for five days a week for two to three years. I mean, just a lot of people are not going to do it. If you can do 2,000 words a day or more five days a week for six months, you will definitely get some ad revenue coming in, whether it's from AdSense, whether it's from ads from affiliate networks on your blog, whatever ads you have on your blog, yes, it will start generating income. It may not be much, but it's a start. Now, what is there to talk about? Mathematics, how to sh solve math problems. You can create a blog with you know, making just the investment in a domain name and dedicated web hosting. And you can start blogging about your feelings on rising gas prices. That's a great side hustle. Really, really great. And actually, I have spent over 30 minutes answering one question. And I have an array of them. And I got my new memory card in this camera. This bad boy is recording eight hours when i first popped it in and before i hit record i saw eight hours and three minutes oh wow Whew. so i'm gonna be going today <laughs> i'm putting this baby to work but really and truly blogging requires zero marketing budget you can blog any hour of the day and the beauty of blogging is once you publish that blog over the course of time the search engines will notice your blogging behavior if you're consistent with the 2,000 words every blog post or more than 2,000 words the search engines will they will likely give you favor and rank you higher in unpaid organic search engine results pages versus the blogging competitors in your niche who are not blogging as ambitious as you are the good news also about blogging is it's a 24 hour a day blog while you are sleeping that blog is running and that blog is showing ads and it is greatering your potential to earn streams of passive income passive income is money earned after you have completed the job of a content marketing and this is the beauty of making money on the internet. This is also the beauty of not having to rely on your employer for a sole source of income. Um, so that's pretty much it. I've explained to you four sources 
um, of generating traffic with zero marketing budget. But one thing I forgot to mention about number one, YouTube. When you are uploading videos to your YouTube channel, if you already own a self-hosted WordPress blog and you have your own domain name, a natural way to increase backlinks backlinks to improve your natural search engine rankings to generate more uh, blog traffic is by including links in your YouTube description sections back to certain blog posts not back to the what we call the top level or the root the root level of your domain which is the www yourlastname.com or myname.com that's what we call the root level or the root or the top top level domain you don't want to include that verbatim in every YouTube um, video description you want to include links to specific blog posts in every YouTube description so not only do you increase backlinks to that specific blog post but you also improve your natural search engine rankings over time one thing i also did not mention excuse me about youtube and pinterest is that when you steadily increase excuse me i just got finished eating some hibachi a couple of hours ago when you when you consistently i said steadily but i meant to say consistently increase include links to your YouTube videos or to your blogs especially to your blog posts let me just take out the YouTube when you consistently include links in your YouTube video descriptions and include links to your bl specific blog posts in Pinterest pin descriptions in the URL section one thing I didn't tell y'all is that over time three to six months is what it takes using up uh, promoting your blog posts using youtube and pinterest will guaranteed i'm telling you this because it worked for me guaranteed will lower your website bounce rate bounce rate plays a factor in your natural search engine rankings for the betterment or for the worse um including links in every YouTube video everything I don't care what people think um, sometimes in my videos I include six like one video I just cloaked six links to a website I included six cloaked links in a YouTube video pointing back to a website I don't care if people think I'm thirsty listen I'm going broke and I have no shame saying it. Listen, gas prices are killing my pockets, okay? They are hurting me. I need more money from Google. I need money. I'm gonna sound like Donald Trump. I need money. Show me money. I need money. Because I am not ashamed to look nosy people again. They're looking at me. They're looking at the camera. Mind your business. Keep walking. People are so nosy. Everybody want to look. What are you looking for? Mind your business. Mind your business. <laughs> but yes, I'm, 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 I'm thirsty too. I need some money. So to make money off of YouTube, I'm going to include links. I'm going to include more links in my YouTube video descriptions. And it's going to be pointing to some advertisers. It's going to be pointing to a website. Yes, I need money too. So I'm going to tell you the same thing. Including links consistently in your YouTube video descriptions and on Pinterest will lower your website bounce rate. And yes, it will increase the probability of you making more money from affiliate marketing. On Pinterest, they now allow... Um, affiliate marketers, if you don't own a blog or website, and this requires a zero marketing budget, Pinterest is now allowing people to drive traffic by directly promoting affiliate links in Pinterest pins pointing back to affiliated advertisers. This is a good way for people with zero dollars to invest in a domain name and hosting. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. 
to make money online you don't necessarily need a blog website or domain name even though I highly recommend it because owning a blog or website and a domain name it is called your online real estate let me see if this thing got hot yet yo this juice box is cool it's not even nowhere near warm let me see what the camera is like camera it's getting a little camera's a little warm but anyways, all right, so I'm gonna get up off of that. That's pretty, maybe it's the squirrels. All right, so that's question number one. That's just, I now have, let me see here. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I got 17 questions. Oh my, woo. Okay, I got 17 questions. 17. Wow. Okay, so that's I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it there for number one. Okay. Question number two. What are the best ways? This is question number two. Question number two says, what are the best ways to do content marketing? If you if you are transitioning into a full time digital nomad and don't walk around with a laptop with an instant internet connection on you one of the best ways to do content marketing is on your phone your phone is instantly connected to the internet and let me see if I can show you guys here if you take a look at right there that's Google Docs Look at this fool. Pitch black tenant windows. You got a hoopty. No, not a hoopty. He got a jalopy. That's what we used to say in New York. Jalopy. We didn't say hoopty. We said jalopy. He got a jaloop. Uh, uh, I, I said a, I didn't say a jaloopy. A jalopy Honda Accord with pitch black tenant windows. He, some, the Wilmington is going to get him. They're going to give him a ticket for them wind tents. And he's probably already allegedly zooted up off or something. Whatever. Moving forward. Um, one of the best ways to do content marketing is by through your phone and hitting the um, Google Docs feature there. Google Docs allows you to tap into the microphone. Let me see if I can just do one for you real quick. And if I hit new document allows me to open up a blank document right now if you take a look here that blue thing that you just saw turn on now I'm talking into my phone and and I'm recording myself on camera I just want to see if this thing works while people watch the words appear in the Google Docs document as I speak period the beauty of doing this is not having to type manually on the computer keyboard, comma, thus reducing carpal tunnel syndrome and headaches from staring at the computer screen too long, period. Now let me see. Folks, did I type that? Did I, did I type that? You answer the question. You saw my voice, you saw what it did. That right there is a guaranteed way to do content marketing. Now the beauty of doing content marketing that way, if you're trying to get really get into the dedicated mindset of content marketing as a full-time business, that's the way you train your brain to engage into content marketing. And then once you get used to doing that, set small daily goals for yourself let's say if you're not used to writing and you're considering blogging as a business then do this today i'm going to set a goal i'm going to see if i can go monday through friday consistently and let's just say a thousand words let me see if i can keep this habit up or pat uh pattern for 30 days monday through friday 1,000 words on my phone for 30 days and after the 30 days or perhaps even six weeks something up here clicks your mind will get used to doing content let me see oh I'm actually I'm still recording 
the remote control is also telling me how long I've been recording for. So 44 minutes, 10, 11, 12. Man, I'm doing great. It's already been going for 44, almost 45 minutes. Juice box is all right. Shout out to Yolo Tech Juice Box, by the way. This is a great investment that I made, and uh, I look forward to making longer videos with this uh, GoPro Hero 9. So content marketing, like I said, make small daily goals. Monday through Friday, if you're struggling to transition into the dedicated mindset, Monday through Friday for 30 days to six weeks, see if you can do a thousand words a day. Like I said, Monday through Friday, a thousand words a day, push it out for six weeks. That's what I would recommend. And see if you can get used to that mindset. Blogging or vlogging blogging or vlogging once you get used to that mindset of consistently posting content then after a while it becomes second nature it becomes a breeze but the thing I will tell you this you have to want to do this from the heart this is a zero pressure there is no one will tell you you have to do this it has to be in you it has to be in here and it has to be in your heart anything in life that you do whether it's good or evil it is in your heart and mind to do when you do the same thing repetitiously it starts to root itself in you whether it's good or whether it's evil so with that said regardless of your age regardless what you've been through it is never too late to reprogram retrain your brain and get on board with content marketing I will tell you this with content marketing this is the secret sauce your employer does not want you to know Content marketing is a tedious process. This is a lot of work because it requires thinking outside the box. However, content marketing can make you a millionaire. You have to want to do this because when you don't engage in content marketing wholeheartedly, you leave money on the table for others to take from you. I am one of the stupid people. Now, I'm not talking about anyone else. I'm talking about me. Me. No subliminal slurs. No jabs. No nothing. Me. Sean. I was a fool for 12 years. I started a YouTube channel back in 2009 after I got dumped and I did nothing with it I uploaded a couple of videos I had no understanding about the YouTube algorithm how anything works nothing of that sort I made some videos here and there for this one YouTube channel um, I didn't know anything about length or descriptions keywords and all that other yada 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 I left millions and millions of dollars on the table. This is before I had this GoPro. This is before I had the Sony a7 III. This is kind of like a, a few years after I started learning about, excuse me, learning about affiliate marketing. And I really didn't know much. The stuff that I, that I know today about affiliate marketing, I didn't know that much. Excuse me, back then I didn't know about, you know, have a comprehensive understanding about the consistency of content marketing, search engine optimization, driving traffic, you know, earning passive income 24 hours a day. I didn't know. I didn't know that much back then and I didn't have a comprehensive understanding. Today I have a much more mature understanding about that stuff. So this is why I share that with you. Content marketing man you could become a millionaire but like i said you got to want to do it whether it's creating one youtube video a day and if you make a youtube video every day do it monday through friday for try to do it for like at least you know six months and see what happens um 
make sure that the video is at least, eh, I want to say about 20 minutes in length because the YouTube algorithm looks at certain behavior, uh, video posting behaviors, you know, such as the length of the video, such as the description, the length of your YouTube description, which is, uh, I would say, shoot for 200 words every YouTube description and include the relevant keywords to the niche topic of your video in every YouTube description. If you want to do longer than 200 words, it's absolutely fine. Um, and then make sure that your keywords and your phrases in your YouTube keyword, your tags section is relevant to the niche topic. So don't do any keyword stuffing. Don't do none of that stuff because when you do keyword stuffing in your YouTube videos, the algorithm, the algorithm will pick up on that. And then there's times when the algorithm doesn't understand because you're kind of like all over the place. But hey that's so much for that but if you choose to do content marketing just with youtube videos make one youtube video a day for a year monday through friday 200 words in your youtube description about 20 minutes in length and include five to ten relevant keywords um some youtube content creators choose not to add tags that's totally fine i mean it's optional you don't have to do it but adding tags to me may potentially help your blog i mean your youtube channel correction um, get more traffic and subscribers so give it a shot like I said content marketing this is the stuff that your employer doesn't want you to know because you will be liberated if you apply yourself wholeheartedly to this line of work you will be liberated from day jobs you will no longer need an employer for your source of income you can live out your dreams you can pay off your debt but again this is not a get rich quick overnight operation you have to want to do this let me see how long this has been going for now I've been uh, uh, let me see let me see here um, 51 minutes all right all right Yeehaw. yes sir okay so hopefully that answers your question and once your YouTube videos and your blog posts are published um, there is a free service um, I, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. I want to see. Uh, let me see. Which one am I going to pull out? Uh, pull out the hat. Uh, try. Write this website address down with a piece of paper. Okay. Website address is. Uh, let me see. If that. If that or this. Uh, no. It's. IFTTT. Dot com. That's right, ifttt.com. If this, then that.com. Ifttt.com. That is a free service. Um, that company is owned by Mark Cuban, to the best of my knowledge. Um, that's one of Mark Cuban's alleged philanthropic ventures. Um, they have a free and a paid side. The free side is very effective. I use free. I used to be paid, but then. I just like paying four bucks a month is just not worth it. I mean, to me. He makes some money off of it anyways, but you don't need my four bucks a month. IFTTT.com, they have so many apps there, it's not even funny. Um, once you create a free account on IFTTT.com, you can grab the RSS feed from your YouTube channel. I'm not going to go into how you can um, get the RSS feed from your YouTube channel today, but if you want to learn how to grab the RSS feed from your YouTube channel, just go, in, punt, go into Google or Bing or Yahoo, uh, do a search for how to find the RSS feed for your YouTube channel. And once you get the RSS feed for your YouTube channel and you've created your free account on ifttt.com, they have an RSS app that allows you to put in the RSS feed from anything, whether it's a blog, a website, a YouTube channel, a social media profile. And once you put in your RSS feed into that RSS app, then it'll say, if this, then if this, you, you go, go into the search box and then punch in RSS. You'll see an, an orange application with the RSS symbol going this way, like the North Face symbol. And you would use that RSS app to put in your the feed for or the feed for your RSS feed once you have that input into your IFTTT profile then you can um, select your applet then it'll say then that 
select your applet your applet would be whatever social network you want your YouTube videos or your blog post syndicated to so if you want it automatically sent to Twitter if you want it automatically sent into a LinkedIn company page if you automatically want it sent to a Facebook fan page if you want it sent to they used to do Pinterest but I think they took Pinterest off um, if you want it sent to Reddit IFTTT automatically posts to Reddit using an RSS app that I know for sure because I now have an IFTTT account and there are certain types of content that I publish. I don't have to lift a finger. That content specifically goes to Reddit because I set up the RSS app to, to do just that. So IFTTT is a free service. They are great. Once you publish a new video or a blog, you can basically pick Reddit, you can pick LinkedIn, you can pick uh, Twitter, you can pick a Facebook fan page, and this one RSS app will automatically post your new two YouTube videos to all four social net. Well, I'm sorry, that's a uh, Reddit is really not a social network. Reddit is like a social bookmarking service. It's like I think they're owned by GQ. No, it's this, um, not GQ. I'm sorry, Condé Nast. I'm a former employee of Condé Nast Publications. Well, Condé Nast Advance, Advance, um, Advance Internet. I'm a former employee of Advance Internet, but Advance Internet and GQ Magazine and Con and um, Condé Nast, they're all the same thing. They're they're all under that umbrella to me. But um, yeah, you can now if you don't. If you're not familiar with IFTTT, just go into your web browser and punch in IFTTT.com and just learn more for yourself. Uh, let me see now what I'm going on. 50, almost 56 minutes, 58, 59. All right, this thing is doing great. I ain't got, let me see how the camera's doing. Camera's okay, even the camera's okay. Camera's getting a little warm, but uh, Nevertheless, I'm still going. 50, yeah, still going. All right. So hopefully that answers your question to the best ways to do in content marketing. Like I said, let me rehash it one more time in a quick synopsis. Number one, your phone. Two, Google Docs. Speak your content into your phone. Now you don't have to necessarily do all 1,000 words at once. It could be a project that you're working on throughout the day whether you're out and about doing something, you can easily double back to your document. This is how it would look when you double back to your Google Docs document. And let me see if this thing is continually keep going and adding small spurts of content throughout the day, period. Once you're done, adding content to the Google Docs document, comma, use this function up here and hit word count. Now, I was just finagling and just fiddling I was just fiddling with the um, with this application. I was just fiddling with this. All of this is just this is just play on words, okay? Now it didn't even take me five minutes. I don't even think it took me five minutes to do this, okay? Look at the word count. If can you see it? It didn't even take me, I don't even think five minutes. If 10 minutes the most, okay? This says 691. So gauge yourself. Let's say on a good day, you have a good day to yourself, no distractions. Give you, pace yourself, set a small goal. Let's say within an hour time, you plan on doing a thousand words, an hour. It doesn't take an hour to do a thousand words on your phone. As you can see, I spit these words out as y'all watched me do it. Did I type on a computer keyboard? No. Did I do any of this? Did you, did you see me with a laptop today? I left the laptop at the Yibs 
Yibs is a Brooklyn word. That's from back in the 90s. But Yibs means your place of residence, where you live at. Um, no, I use my voice just finagling and fiddling with this Google Docs document. And I'm going to go back to the word count again just to make sure. Okay, folks, can you see it? Can you see it? Can you? Wait a minute. Let me go back. I got 15 more questions to answer. And guess what? I'm going to keep going until this camera gets hot and shut off. 691 words. It didn't even take me 10 minutes to do it. So imagine getting in the mindset consistently of posting a thousand words a day. That's a squirrel. They like me around here, but they came real close. You almost let me touch them. They're friendly around here. Anyways, um, thousand words, six months, Monday through Friday. You want to be on YouTube? You want to be famous? <laughs> and when you notice that, okay, I'm going to set a goal today and I'm going to take an hour to post a thousand words. If you can do a thousand words in 10 to 15 minutes, you are on the roll. There's a squirrel right in front of me. Y'all want to see him real quick? Take a look. There was a couple of them around here a few minutes, well, a while back. Uh oh, guess what? Have officially hit one hour. All right. Thank you. One hour, one hour and one minute, and the juice box is still full. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Have made it. This feels good. Now I can shoot these uh, two, three, four hour videos. As long as the camera doesn't get too hot and shut off, I mean, I can just keep going. But anyways, let me actually see if this thing is hot yet. Uh, it's getting a little warm in the back part section, but nevertheless, it's still going. Okay. But uh, let me move on from question number two. So basically, when you get a chance, just check out ifttt.com. It's a free automated social bookmarking service. Um, but again, like I said, if you choose to use it, be mindful of the duplicate content. Because if you're running AdSense on a blog, or if you're running AdSense on a YouTube channel, Google tends to penalize you. And AdSense is very, very iffy about duplicate content. One of the parts of the AdSense terms and uh, of the terms and terms of service is to be mindful of duplicate content. Too too much duplicate content can get you banned from the AdSense program. So if you choose to use that social bookmarking service ifttt.com by Mark Cuban, um, just be mindful how many social networks you post to. You, you they used to have the option for you to auto post to Pinterest, not anymore. But now on the flip side, you can use your direct um, Pinterest account to auto post content from RSS feeds from your YouTube channel and from your website or blog. So um, use that at, as your or at your own description for content marketing. Okay. All right. So that's question number two down. Now we're going to move on to question number three. Question number three says, has anyone used article spinner? Not a, I'm reading it verbatim, even though their grammar is not too, uh, spec their vernacular on their grammar is not too spectacular. <laughs> Uh, question number three says, has anyone used Article Spinner for content creation? Uh, I'm going to go into that. <sighs> okay. Back in the late 1990s, the f I believe the first article directory that came out, um, I'm not going to say the name, actually inspired writers to increase their article submissions some article marketers from back in the day started using article marketing as a means of uh, uh well 
some, not all, but some article marketers tend to abuse article marketing as a means of black hat SEO. If you don't know what black hat SEO is, it's illegal search engine optimization. It is uh, using all sorts of underhanded search engine optimizing practices, uh, link building methods to get the upper hand and rank higher in search engine results pages. Search engine algorithms like Google, Bing, um, Yahoo, and even Yandex, their algorithm will find you out if you are a black hat SEO spammer. Um, your, your victory is temporary. You are very short lived, especially if you're doing black hat SEO on a blog optimized with AdSense. Your blog will crash, burn, and you will be kicked out of the AdSense program and your IP address will be delisted from search engines. You will be black bald. Therefore, you will have to start all over again as an honest person. And no, I have never engaged in black hat SEO. But however, an article spinner. For those who don't know, an article spinner is basically a program whereas you can punch in the original content for anything, whether it's a news article, whether it's uh, your own writing, even if you plagiarize someone else, you put the original content into the article spinner and the article spinner, it's, it's, a, it's a program, it spins the content, it uses variations, it reads the content, uses variations of certain keywords, phrases, and then what it does is it spins the content to make it sound original, but to people who read the content, some people are smart and yes, they will catch on that this person did not Excuse me one sec. So cute. Um, search engines will catch on and people will catch on to it and they will either report the article or the search engine will delist it from the search engine results pages. Article spinners are black hat SEO software. That's, that's it. It's not to be used at all take time to write the content because as a content creator you would rather be respected for having less content but the content is originally created by you versus trying to build up your content and you're either plagiarizing someone by using article spinning software or taking your original published works and then using your originally written published works and then re-spinning that content into variations and then republishing and republishing a lot of people use these article spinner softwares to improve their seo so they would take the spun version of the article they would submit that to the article directory for approval and then what they would do is you continually use this article spinner program off of one original written piece of content they would spit variations maybe 12 24 30 pieces 30 variated pieces of the original written content and then take all of the rest of the pieces of content and then the program would likely have a feature whereas after this finishes spinning the article maybe 12 25 or 30 different times the article spinning program will use an automated function to submit that content that spun content to every individual article directory and then it would probably have the links to specific keywords the hyperlink the anchor text links already inserted so article spinners use this software as a illegitimate competitive advantage to boost their search engine rankings and yes it did work back in the late 90s and the early 2000s, but really Google got sick of it. And I don't think Bing was around back then, but Google got sick of it. Um, their spam team really did dug deep and Google released a ton of algorithmic updates. They caught on and Google today does not really like article directory sites because like I said, black hat seo article marketers not everybody was at a black hat seo article marketer um a lot of black hat seo article marketers they their sites crumbled and they did it not only to boost their search engine rankings they did it for the purpose of 
boosting your affiliate commissions quickly, ranking to the top of search engines for specific search terms, keywords. They made money really quick. Google caught on, they crashed and burned, and they got kicked out. And all I have to say is this, do not use an article spinner. Please take your time to create the content because if you want this to be your full-time career, like I said, you want to be honest. Be honest and create the content. Even if you write like a dog on the internet, be yourself, take time to create the content and do, excuse me, do not use, mm, excuse me, I feel like I got something stuck in my tongue. Do not use article spinning software. Google doesn't really like article directories today. And I will tell you this, article directories, in my personal opinion, this is what I think, they're not worth submitting articles to. Now, if you must, if you really feel that you wanna do some article marketing to promote your site, to improve your SEO, I would recommend medium.com. Medium.com is owned by a former Twitter employee. Medium.com is completely legitimate. You can insert as many links pointing back to your blog, your website, or YouTube channel as you want. They don't have any restrictions. Um, you can even include affiliate links in the body of your Medium articles pointing directly to the advertiser. That's solely something you can do in every article you publish whereas with a traditional article directory you can't do that i know one article directory that's still around today that's been around since the late 1990s and i believe to this day they only allow you to have one link in the body of your article prior to that article being approved so once you submit your article to that specific article directory you still have to wait a couple of hours or maybe even a couple of days before that article is approved versus if you write and publish an article on medium.com you don't have to wait for anyone to approve your article excuse me one moment let me just see if this is warming up yet no juice box is still let me see juice box is lukewarm I mean, not really lukewarm, but halfway cold. I don't feel a, a rise in temperature on the juice box. The GoPro is, let me see, back of here is giving off just a little bit. Yeah, it's giving off a little bit of heat in the back. I'm on an hour and 11 minutes. This is great. All right, so still going. Um, yeah, article spinning programs, leave those alone. Those are black hat SEO programs, and um, you want to make passive income online. You don't. Let's go, a little baby spider. Don't do it. All right. So I'm just gonna cut it off at that. All right. Moving on. Um, question number four. Question number four says, "How do I start content writing from scratch?" Okay. In reference to question number four. Um. I'm sorry, this is not question number four. One, two, I'm sorry, I have to correct myself. One, two, three. I'm sorry, let me correct myself. This is actually question number five. Question number five. Question number five says, how do I start content writing from scratch? Content writing from scratch, again, using your phone. If you don't carry around your laptop with you, you can start your content writing from scratch using your phone activating the Google Docs feature, open up a new blank Google Docs document. And once you do that, where you see the blue blue at, that's a microphone. Turn the microphone on and start talking. Once you start talking into your phone, your voice automatically translate into into what's called contextual content. The contextual content is being recorded from your voice into the Google um, Docs app and your words will appear in the Docs document. The beauty of using your voice is now you're using your mouth versus traditionally using your hands to, com 
type on a keyboard to create content, it gives you more motivation to create what's called long form content. Long form content, which is content in excess of 1,500 words or more, showing people how to do something more like DIY posts, do it yourself, or a list post. 10 ways to do this, or 10 ways to solve that problem. Um, list posts and DIY posts are classical examples of long form content. Long form content gets better rankings in search engines over time and long form content can be achieved solely using your phone and Google Docs and the speech recognition function. This is good to do while you're out and about because it keeps you motivated in your side hustle to continually create content. Um, that's how you can do content from scratch and guess what zero marketing budget all right so i'm going to end the question from there you don't have any more excuses not to start a side hustle your phone has a camera you can start a youtube channel whether your phone has 4k video or not once you start making money you can upgrade to 4k whether a 4k camera phone an apple iphone or getting yourself a gopro camera and kicking out 349 or 400 bucks whatever the case is all right let me just see yeah juice box is beautiful i don't get no no temperature rise nope nada nada still going an hour this is an hour and 11 minutes on here, but the camera says one hour, 15 minutes. Okay, so which one is it gonna be, man? All right, somebody's running slow. I think this remote control is going slow here. All right, hour and 15 minutes. Man, I'm doing great. Okay, so question number six. Question number six says, how does content boost SEO? Content boosts SEO when the search engine algorithms notice that your consisting post, your, your content consistency is on track. So let me, let me clarify that. You have a goal, like I mentioned in question number one, excuse me, and partially in question number two. Set small content marketing goals. If you own a blog, Monday through Friday, set a goal. Just practice before you really get into long form content just practice a thousand words Monday through Friday for six months what is six months 180 days but you're not posting for 180 days you're only doing it Monday through Friday for six months okay so that's 20 days out of the month two times six that's 120 days can you post a thousand words a day for 120 days to get the search engines to notice that you are a consistent content marketer? The answer is yes. It's called mind over matter. The more content you post, the more consistent you are in your content marketing efforts. Your content will automatically boost your SEO. Now, when some people think of boosting SEO, they think of the number going up. Now, you're absolutely wrong. The way your content boosts SEO is when your United States traffic search rank goes down. The reason why it's going down is because you don't want your search engine, your content search engine traffic rankings going up. So if it goes up, it's not good. That means your site is now losing favor. So you don't want your site ranking at 1 million. You want your site to rank, let's just say, uh, out of the top 10,000 sites ranking well in the United States, you might have a goal of your site ranking at like 9,000 in the US. If your site traffic rank ranks around 9,000 or a little over 9,000 in the United States, you making good money and all of that can be achieved through consistently posting content so as your mind starts getting used to posting content consistently let me see if this okay oh it did finally move up one hour and 18 minutes okay hour and 18 minutes i'm doing great let me see no temperature change in the juice box but the gopro is getting a little bit warm now a little warm um yeah so search engines will notice that your consistency in your content marketing efforts posting to your blog 
they will notice it and you will naturally improve your search engine rankings over that six month time. How you can measure this, you can use SEM Rush software, you can use um, similarweb.com. You used to be able to use Alexa's, uh, Amazon's Alexa, but that site shut down. They used to give you the global traffic rank and the US traffic rank. It was so easy and simple to use. A third grader could understand, but now that they shut down, I don't understand how to use the other site, so now I'm just in the dark. <sighs> but it's all good though. You can use Google Search Console, <laughs> I'm just being stupid, or use Google Analytics to measure how well your site is ranking. And also, if you have AdSense, you can always log into your AdSense Publisher dashboard and check out your AdSense Publisher earnings. Once your site starts improving in terms of the SEO, your AdSense income will automatically improve. It's, you'll, you, you will know when your um, blog starts ranking better in search engine results pages. So the bottom line is this, just create great content for people to read. And if they like what they've read, they will share your content across social networks. They will post to Pinterest. That gives you free advertising. That gives you free backlinks. And when your blog readers share your content without you asking them to do so, that also is um, boosting your SEO. Search engines will notice that and they also take that into account as part of your ranking factor, okay? So bottom line, just use your phone create great content, stick to the script, love what you do, don't f look forward to making a full-time income from your blog, your website, or YouTube channel for a good year, year and a half. Just do it because you wanna do it, all right? As long as you create content for people and not for search engines, don't use, you know, don't be using no black hat article spinning on that, you know, yada, yada, yada. Be original. Even if you can't write a complete, formulate a complete sentence in clarity, at least you wrote it post it let people think whatever they want to think let them laugh at you but you took time to write the content the search engines will notice that stick to the script six months original content a thousand words monday through friday six months do it because you want to and you will notice the search engines will send you more traffic that's how you know your seo is improving all right so that is uh, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five. That's question number six. I am moving on to now to question number seven. Question number seven says, how can one make it in affiliate marketing? Let me see here, yep. Hour and 21 minutes, I'm doing great. How can one make it in affiliate marketing? I'm gonna tell you this, affiliate marketing is for everybody, but it ain't for everybody. It is for everybody because anybody from anywhere, whether you're homeless, whether you live at the YMCA. <laughs> Thanks, Tanya. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, whether you are sleeping in a cot under the bridge. Um, whether, oh gosh, whether you've been furloughed, wrongfully terminated, whether you're on a budget, whether you're just trying to get your money up, whatever your case is, if you really want it, that bad affiliate marketing can work for you and you will not look at your current situation. There are people in this line of work and called affiliate marketing from all walks of life, judges, police officers, government officials, prosecutors, um, probably some alleged members of President Joe Biden's presidential cabinet are secretly engaged in affiliate marketing. Um, retirees, formal civil service uh, servants, um, taxi cab drivers, janitors, um, burger flippers. It doesn't matter who you are. It's how you use this and how bad you want affiliate marketing to work for you. If you want it to work for you, it will work. How can one make it in affiliate marketing? 
this is for everybody but it ain't for everybody this is for everybody who has a will to get out of the day job and succeed in running their own business doing what they love to do as a side hustle and turning it into a full-time multi-million dollar online business this is not for everyone because there are people who want to get rich quick and affiliate marketing is not it you have to do the work you have to put in the work whether it's creating content whether it's creating and managing your own self um, PPC pay-per-click ad campaigns across the Google Ads uh, AdWords or the Microsoft ad network um, whether you are um, I don't know promoting digital ebooks for sale through social media or permission-based email newsletters Whatever it is, um, if you if if you want to make that happen, you can make it happen. This ain't for everybody because if you're looking to get rich quick, this ain't for you. If you don't want to put it in the work, this ain't for you. If you're one of those people that have that mindset that, oh, that only happens to certain kind of people. That'll never work for me. That Debbie Downer mindset is going to keep you dependent on your employer. When your employer rings you that bell and says, okay, I need everybody to mandatory stay for mandatory overtime, you're going to be like, Oh, shucks. Man, I got to do this. Yeah, you got to do it because you don't believe affiliate marketing works. So when they say a mandatory overtime, you better work overtime or else you're going to be right there working overtime and you're going to be mad with yourself because you didn't take a chance with affiliate marketing. How can one make it in affiliate marketing? Get started. Stop wishing for a star and just get started now. Yeah, stop dreaming and start doing. Just do it. Start a YouTube channel, make the investment, get a domain name, get a dedicated server, start blogging. Actually do both. Get a YouTube channel and start blogging on a self-hosted WordPress blog. I'm not going to go into all of that, you know, the benefits of the self-hosted blog. I believe I have in previous videos, but I'm going to leave that for another day. How can one make it in affiliate marketing? Make it work. Put in the work. Create the content. Stop dreaming. Oh man, you know, I see everybody else doing it. I'm not sure if that stuff works. Get out there and find out for yourself. Get the YouTube channel going. Start uploading videos. Um, a lot of people, including myself, when we all first started out, we did not know what we were doing. We didn't know what search engine optimization, what's content marketing, how do I do this, what's the benefits of uploading. Everybody messes up in the beginning. Everybody. And you're still going to make mistakes along, along the way as you learn in affiliate marketing. Just do it. Just get started. You will learn along the way. Everybody makes mistakes in affiliate marketing. And that includes me. I am no exception. I still make mistakes. And one of the mistakes that I make, and I'm going to... I'm talking about me. I ain't talking about nobody else. I ain't throwing no jabs. I'm inconsistent sometimes. My inconsistency costs me ad revenue. It costs me search engine rankings because there's some days I just don't feel like doing it. Or some days I'm just tired. I need to catch up on sleep. I might feel a little fatigued. I just don't feel like it. But I know that it's always there for me to do. But there's days that I let go by and I just do nothing. So I need to get, that's one of my mistakes. I need to get out of that stinking thinking. As my homie Jaquim would say, get out of that stinking thinking. Shout out to Jaquim from BK. And um, change your mindset. It's this, it's this, and it's this. Creating content, you gotta want it. You wanna make it in affiliate marketing? Get in that mindset of making it work for you. Get out of your comfort zone up here and get used to getting comfortable because now in this freelance line of work, you have to get organized. Let me see. Oh, I'm going an hour and a half. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm on hour and 27 minutes and some seconds. Man, this is the longest one. Hour and 28 minutes. All right. Shout out to Yolo Tech Juice Box, baby. This thing is working. I got to lift a little bit of the Brooklyn homeboy out of me, man. I'm happy like a kid in a Brooklyn candy store. This thing is not, Juice Box is not heating up, folks. Oh, man. 
the camera the camera's a little warm but it's it's still going all right man i'm old <laughs> as as um this was this old tv show back in the 80s called dukes of hazard and a little pain in the butt, pain in the turd. We used to call him uh, Roscoe Pico Train. And uh, Roscoe, whenever he was getting his way, he'd be like, It's getting good, 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 good. I know I'm such a clown, but this thing is getting good, good, good. I love it, I love it. Because now I can make longer videos and I can run my mouth like a jibber jabbering former New Yorker, but with good information for you. All right, so. If you really want to make it in affiliate marketing, post lots and lots of content. Do it as a labor of love. Don't look forward to making money from it for about a good year, year and a half. Do it as a side hustle. Set aside two to three hours a day, um, whether it's creating you know, one YouTube video a day and one blog post. See how you can get adjusted to doing that. A thousand words a day for six months one YouTube video a day for six months, Monday through Friday. See if you can get used to that and stick to that mental script. One YouTube video, 200 words, optimized with relevant keywords, Monday through Friday for six months. One blog post a day, 1,000 words, Monday through Friday for six months. See how well you can adjust to that and if you can get used to that and you get good results, then Go from there and optimize your blog with affiliate advertising from affiliate networks. If you want to learn more about affiliate marketing, just go into your favorite search engine, punch in affiliate marketing or high paying affiliate networks and the search engine of your choice should return some really good relevant information in regards to what you're looking for. Okay, so that is my answer to um, question number seven, two, three, four, five. Yeah, question number seven. And I'm gonna move on from that. Question number eight, that is question number eight. Question number eight says, what are the best and most profitable affiliate marketing platforms? So this is a good question. Um, if you don't have out, all right, I have to give myself a round of applause and inter inter interrupt myself. I've officially made it, folks, to an hour and 30 minutes. Juice box is worth the investment, folks. If you don't have it, pick it up. I don't have any affiliate links for it. I'm not making any money telling you this. This is not a brand spot. This is not a sponsored video or nothing like that. Yolo Tech Juice Box, these guys know what they're doing. It is now going on an hour and 31 minutes. This camera is still going. Oh man, I am sure. <laughs> yeah, buddy. I love it. I love it. I love it. Good, good, good. All right, so question number eight. Let me just repeat it again. What are the best and most profitable affiliate marketing platforms? This is the time to have your pen and paper handy. I'm going to give you a couple word of mouth. I'm going to give you a couple of affiliate networks. They are reputable. Um, some of them I have made money from. Um, the aforementioned affiliate networks, I'm not a member of all of the aforementioned affiliate networks. Some, I'm not going to tell you which ones, but um, yes, yes, they are reputable. Number one. CJ.com, formerly known as Commission Junction. When I unintentionally stumbled upon affiliate marketing in 2005, just off of a clear thought, curiosity, just a thought came to me, go to Walmart.com. Because I used to be, um, I used to be the biggest internet playboy on BlackThePlanet.com. I used to be the biggest one. Um, in Florida and Delaware, I was the biggest one. Nobody, no, no man, no man. I don't care who you are. No man on Black Planet back in the day, in the late '90s and early 2000s. Nobody in Florida nor Delaware. Nobody. I don't care who you are. Even if you're a former friend, I'm the one that showed you how to do it. Nobody was doing it bigger than me on blackplanet.com back in the day nobody i was a dedicated internet player i didn't had all the fun i wanted with the ladies that was my side hustle <laughs> back in the day until i matured and got out of that 
um, enjoyed that online stuff too much. But anyways, before affiliate marketing, I was the big time internet player and I was getting women and having all the fun. And uh, man, I got so many stories. I'm not even going to go into it. I'm a little too experienced. And if you notice, I really leave the dating topic. I leave that. I don't really get into that because I have too much experience and I don't want to be saying nothing on video that's really going to, you know, stir the pot. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, where was I at? So before I got into affiliate marketing, like I said, I was the biggest player and I had really started maturing in the, you know, in the mid 2000s and checking myself. But I wanted to start making money alternatively because I hated the fact of getting up and going to work for someone else. Sure, I did it. I struggled. I took numerous buses to work. I did what I had to do, even though I'm an unmarried person. I've never been married. I don't have any kids. Um, and, you know, all I, all I had to do was take care of myself. But I went through the struggle like the average working class person, standing out on cold bus stops, taking two buses from work, dealing with people, getting into arguments and all that other stuff. I've been through all of that. So I can, you know, speak on that. But anyways, um, around 2005, I was sitting at the computer and I was doodling. I was doing absolutely nothing. I wasn't even looking for women online. <laughs> Dumb days is long gone. I don't do that stuff anymore. I don't, I don't do that. But um, a thought had came to me one day in 2005. I don't know where it came from, but it came out of the middle of nowhere. Keep your voice down. It's always when I, you know, the devil works through people. The devil, I tell you, is always trying to mess me up. Go walk. To, oh, boys, two females. They don't come over. You're going to see a camera sitting nearby and start making noise. Please. I'm sitting in the same location where a, a while back a female was sitting um, nearby and she was hitting a stick on the ground. I guess, no, no, yep, one of them turned and looked at me. Don't come over here. Don't start bothering me. Don't ask no questions. Anyways, and she started hitting the stick on the ground. I guess that was a means of getting my attention. I didn't even know her. And the moment I closed my camera up and stuff and started walking away, she started walking away. I was like, you ain't nothing but full of the devil. I know she's going to turn her head and look again. I know she's going to be nosy. Let me see. No. Anyways, me worried about myself. Hour and 35 minutes. Oh, man, this is the longest this camera this camera's been recording. And the juice box is still no temperature rising it's not hot at all oh man i'm excited man Woo! <laughs> this thing is going dang i'm glad i bought this juice box anyways um so back to my story in 2005 i was just sitting at the computer doodling doing absolutely nothing and a thought came to me Go to your web browser and punch in walmart.com. I'm, I'm telling you guys straight up how I did unintentionally discovered affiliate marketing. So pay attention. So um, I went to walmart.com. I followed the thought in my mind. And I didn't hear any voices. I didn't hear, Sean, go to walmart.com. I didn't hear none of that. I didn't see nothing. I didn't know. It's just a thought. Something that came to my mind. Go to walmart.com. I'm like, go to walmart.com. I don't understand why am I going to walmart.com. And when I got to walmart.com, I didn't know what I was looking for. I was just on the site, just looking. And so I scrolled to the website, thought came to me, go, go scroll down to the bottom of the website. I'm just acting off of thoughts. Scroll to the bottom of the website and I don't even know what I'm looking for. I, I really did not know. I was totally clueless. Why am I on Walmart? And I'm not, I don't want to buy nothing. So I'm looking through the links and I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm just looking. Da, 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 da. I see this thing. What's that? Join our affiliate program. What? Join our affiliate program. Walmart? I, I, I don't know affiliate marketing. Uh, I didn't know what the term meant. What the heck is affiliate marketing? So I click the link that says join our affiliate program. And in so many words, it says make money with Walmart um, through the Linkshare affiliate network. So, like, huh? Affiliate network, Linkshare, what's this? 
with so many so many words it literally said you can make money make money from Walmart online by having a blog or what I'm like a blog what's that what's a blog I don't know what a blog is I, I mean uh, I'm a, I'm a guy that used to hooking up with women on the internet uh, what's this you talking about making money what's this so I'm like reading this stuff and I'm looking through all that. I don't know. I, I can't understand it, but I'm understanding that it's possible for me to make money as an affiliate. What the heck is an affiliate? I don't know what affiliate is. Affiliate, affiliate marketing? What the f What? I don't understand. What am I about to get myself into? But um, I was curious. I didn't know what I was doing. I, I'll be totally honest. I did not know what I was doing. And um, so I got curious. I was like, looked up, uh, I guess, in Google, what is a blog? How, do, how can I get a blog? So long story short, I went over to, um, that's when I discovered Blogspot or Blogger.com. I started a free blog. That's how I got started in blogging. I started a free blog on Blogspot. I forgot what the name of it was, but I started this free blog. Again, I did not know what I was doing, folks. I don't know nothing about HTML and coding and affiliate marketing at the time. I don't know none of this stuff. I know I just started this free blog and I typed something. I don't know what it was. And then I had this blog created and I was curious. I was like, I want to make money off of Walmart. I want to do it. So I submitted the blog along with my Linkshare publisher apps. <laughs> Link share publisher application and uh, let me see how long I've been going. Oh man, I'm going on an hour and 40 minutes. Ooh, yeah. Thank you, Juice Box. I am happy. So I submitted my publisher application with this Blogspot address to, you know, this Blogspot. And I have very, very little content. And to my surprise, um, Walmart approved me for being in their affiliate program through the link share publisher the, through the link share affiliate network so your the question is again what are the best and most profitable affiliate marketing platforms write this down on your piece of paper with a pen number one linkshare.com l-i-n-k-s-h-a-r-e.com they have been around since the late 1990s along with cj.com and cj.com and linkshare are both two top affiliate marketing networks they have been around since the late 1990s and after i got approved for linkshare as a new walmart affiliate i flirted around with a couple of their walmart ad codes and that's when I started learning about 160 by 600 skyscraper ads, 728 by 90, 300 by 250 in the indentation of paragraph number one of your blog post. So your ad will be um, right there smack dab in the reader's face, enticing them to click the ad and make a purchase. So I joined it. I placed around a couple of round. I was messing around with a couple of positions with the... Um, on the Blogspot blog with the Walmart ad code and I left it there and I would type a few blog posts I didn't know what I was doing maybe a couple of sentences probably not even a paragraph and, and about maybe a couple of months later not long after I started the blog someone clicked the ad I guess they found it from the search engine results pages someone went to the blog they clicked the ad the Walmart affiliate ad and they purchased uh, my memory serves me right it was a 700 and some odd dollar pool table and i think walmart was doing generously 10 percent allegedly 10 percent affiliate commissions on sales eight to ten percent something like that anyways walmart was paying really really well um i got a check from linkshare for 72 dollars and some change and i was like yo i had zero marketing budget i started a free blog I joined an affiliate network for free, linkshare.com, placed the Walmart ad code, and Walmart did what they said they were going to do. They will pay you as an affiliate for sales generated through your affiliate links. So that's how my interest um, and my passion and my love for affiliate marketing grew because here I shelled out no money. No money at all. And I actually made money. 
So after I became a LinkShare affiliate, another thought came to me and I did the same thing I did with Walmart. I went to eBay.com. And the second affiliate network that I would recommend, write this down on a piece of paper, is CJ.com. Commission Junction has been around since the late 1990s. They were one of the early pioneers in affiliate marketing. And shortly after um, Amazon launched their affiliate program back in 96, and this camera is really doing good. I'm on a little over an hour and 41 minutes recording. Wow, I really love this. And um, so CJ has been around since literally 1998. That's the same year Google started and they've been around ever since they do exceptionally well so when i joined when i went to, oh let me let me keep my ducks lined up correctly so when i went to ebay.com i did the same thing i did on walmart i scrolled to the bottom of the website and i did not see at the bottom of the website join our affiliate program i just saw one hyperlinked word affiliates i believe if my memory serves me right i saw affiliates affiliates i clicked the link and like similar to the language on the uh, LinkShare, LinkShare Rakuten site, it said about making money from eBay, promoting eBay's products. So I got curious. I joined eBay affiliate program through Commission Junction. And that's how I became an affiliate of CJ. So now that you know, I'm an affiliate of LinkShare and CJ. I'm not going to tell you anybody else that I'm an affiliate of. I don't care if you, if you know either, but I'm not telling you. Um, so I joined CJ and my first affiliate program that I joined was eBay. eBay's affiliate programs used to be on this Commission Junction network. Well, CJ.com Commission Junction is now known as CJ Affiliate by Conversant. They were located in Santa Barbara, California off of Montecito Street and they have a beautiful, beautiful corporate office. They're in a really nice, rich area and they're not far from Fest Parker's Double Tree Resort. If you don't know who Fest Parker is, he is the actor who played Daniel Boone um, back in the 1950s and 60s but anyways um, those are two reputable affiliate marketing networks so after I joined eBay um, I flirted around after you know there was some time I went past and I didn't promote eBay's um, products and I wasn't promoting eBay at all then I discovered a way to use eBay RSS feeds to automatically post content to the social networks that I wanted to post to so I had it posting um, and by the way, Twitter is not a social network. That's like a micro blogging service. There's like little tweets. That's not social network. So I had an application auto posting eBay affiliate RSS data feeds to Twitter. So the Twitter, I didn't have to worry about doing the work of promoting it because I was using a third party in which I still do to this day. I still use a third party um, uh, content auto posting service if I'm not using ifttt.com then I'm using something else um, I'm not going to give out all of the services that I use because I got to keep some things secret and I need you to know it everything the method to my madness <laughs> but um when I started using e eBay RSS data feeds to auto post to Twitter I was making money on autopilot and there was no work involved. The content would just post, and then I would post content from um, other sources that I promote to Twitter, and that was that. There was the eBay feed, there was the eBay content being posted as tweets, then there was my other content being posted as tweets, and everything harmonized, like Ebony and Ivory living in perfect harmony. And I was making money from eBay on autopilot. Now I have to, come, I have to contact eBay soon, um, because I have to learn how to use their developer API and see if it is okay. I have to get permission from eBay to use their RSS. Um, I believe it's okay, but I just want to run it by them first to get their approval to make sure it is okay before I start automating the content, the RSS affiliate content syndication to Twitter again. Uh, just to make sure that that's okay. But yeah, eBay is um, really a good affiliate program. Their their payouts is really not as hot as it used to be. But hey, something is better than nothing. And it is a little bit better than Amazon. Because Amazon only pays, I think they still pay 4% starting out for affiliates. And 4% is not going to help anyone earn a living. So um, I think eBay pays out a little bit better. Uh, 
commissionjunction.com, cj.com, as I mentioned, linkshare.com. Those are two affiliate networks that really pay good. You need to write this down on a piece of paper. Number three, there is another affiliate network for my European affiliates called Trade Doubler. T-R-A-D-E-D-O-U-B-L-E-R dot com. Trade Doubler is a European affiliate marketing network. They have a plethora of advertisers. I'm telling you, affiliate marketing is now on steroids. If you're not in affiliate marketing, it is not too late for you to get your get your um, get yourself involved in this wonderful freelance industry. Affiliate marketing is a an estimated projected potential 10 billion dollar annual industry this ain't going nowhere affiliate marketing is here to stay so um trade doubler is really a great paying affiliate network they have a plethora of advertisers t-r-a-d-e d-o-u-b-l-e-r dot com write that down on a piece of paper and check them out for my european affiliates that is a great affiliate marketing network to be a part of and don't overlook it when you're diversifying your affiliate networks to generate multiple streams of passive income okay um there are hmm ah for my middle eastern affiliates my side hustlers over in the Middle East, in the United Arab Emirates, Dubai, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, Turkey, Jordan, Uzbekistan, Czechoslovakia, the Middle Eastern, um, even though Amazon doesn't pay well in terms of starting out affiliate commission rates, because honestly, you don't, 4% ain't putting no money, 4% can't pay nobody's rent, okay? That's that's just four percent. You might as well look at Amazon money as just pocket change. But hey, if you if you want to do it, it's totally up to you. For my Middle Eastern affiliates, write this down: Souk, S O U Q. Let me repeat this again: S O U Q. Souk. Dot com. That is owned by Amazon. Souk is a Middle Eastern network, whereas you can become an Amazon seller in the Middle East. You can sell products online. And I also believe Souk.com, which is owned by Amazon, I believe it will re redirect you to Souk, S-O-U-Q dot Amazon dot com. You can also promote Middle Eastern affiliate products. You can, I believe they have an affiliate program for affiliate marketers and bloggers in the Middle East looking to promote Amazon in the United Arab Emirates and the middle, the surrounding Middle Eastern countries. Um, that's, a, that's a Middle Eastern affiliate network subdivision of Amazon that Middle Eastern affiliate marketers can look forward, look into for um, another stream of passive income. But again, Amazon starting affiliate commission percentage of 4% ain't cutting the mustard for nobody. I'm an Amazon affiliate, but I, I really, I don't promote Amazon because 4% ain't, I'm a single guy with no kids and never been married, but 4% ain't doing nothing for me. I like big money and there's no way I'm going to make $100,000 in sales online for somebody and all I get is 4000 bucks. That uh, uh. You ain't getting rich off of me like that, buddy. Uh-uh. I don't care how rich you are. You can leave me out of your affiliate program. You heard? All right. So, um... Let me see if I can pull the cat out of the hat or one more. Let me see one more. Let me see what. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see what I got here. Uh, 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 dang. Uh, I got to dig deep, y'all. I got to dig deep. Uh, uh, let's see. Hmm. Let me give you one more. I'm gonna give you one more. I'm not gonna give you all. Last but not least, 
This is for my personal finance bloggers and affiliate marketers. If you have a master's degree in personal finance or you work in the finance industry and you're looking to start a blog as a side hustle centered around the topic of personal finance, like Michelle Schroeder Gardner from makingsenseofsense.com, write this website address down. Commission Soup. That's all together. No hyphens, no nothing. Commissionsoup.com. C O M M I S S I O N S O U P.com. Commission Soup is another steady, good paying affiliate network that I am not a part of. They work with credit card companies. They work with American Express. I believe they work with Chase. They work with prepaid services. They work with secured and unsecured credit cards. And if you're looking to start a really laser focused niche based personal finance blog, giving out free money tips or showing fee people how to join the fire movement, partnering as an affiliate with the Commission Soup Affiliate Network will help you generate a healthy, steady, long term stream of passive income. Um, I know for a fact that when you're filling out the publisher application, they are adamant about the est what you est what your estimated monthly website traffic numbers are like. You want to give them an honest ballpark number because they do check on the back end and they have their ways of measuring your website to rank your site to see is it really getting that much traffic you stated in your publisher application. Um, <laughs> squirrels again. Um, they also ask s certain questions prior to publisher approval and that is a network you really want to be a part of. They have like I said, they have top name credit card companies, banks, other advertisers, and they are paying good money. I know for a fact that American Express is on the Commission Soup Network, and I don't know um, exactly how much American Express is paying in affiliate commission, but I will tell you this. If you're able to join the American Express credit card affiliate program on any affiliate network that American Express does business with in regards to affiliate marketing, you can definitely look forward to making good money with American Express as an American Express affiliate. So if you end up getting approved as a new affiliate for the Commission Soup Affiliate Network, definitely, definitely, and I highly recommend applying first dibs. Go straight for American Express. Um, you want to apply for the American Express US and you also want to apply for the American Express EU which is the European or the American Express CA Canadian affiliate program but definitely apply if all three are available American Express US Canada and the European Union apply for all three if you get apply if you get approved for all three that is a beautiful thing because you don't know where your traffic is coming from in terms of from the search engines, the social networks, if your traffic's coming from YouTube. You don't know what country your traffic is, is in, coming from. So therefore, diversifying yourself with the American Express, your EU and the Canada affiliate adverts on your blog is a good thing. And just to cover yourself legally, you want to have your automated GDPR disclaimer appearing to your European traffic. So you can simply do this by generating a GDPR um, consent form by performing a search in your favorite search engine on how to generate a GDPR form for your blog. Or I'm gonna give you two sites that you can use 
Um, definitely you can use, write this down, you can use share this, S-H-A-R-E, S-H-A-R-E-T-H-I-S.com, share this.com. You can open up a free publisher account and they allow you to put social networking um, follow or share buttons on your blog or website and after you install the code you have other options available inside of your sharethis.com publisher account to enable to GDPR notice so this way you are legally covered the European Union they cannot find you for not having the GDPR form not showing up when you enable it in your share this.com publisher um, dashboard it'll automatically take effect on your blog as long as you have the proper codes installed correctly on the back end of your WordPress blog you'll be a-okay so that when your American Express ads show to the EU traffic you are legally covered once they accept the terms and conditions that certain data will be collected from them and that cookies will be placed on their computer you have zero legal worries you're good you can make money just make sure you install your gdpr notice on your blog because you know in this freelance marketing and this freelance blogging line of work you're going to have tons of traffic coming from the eu and the last thing that you want is a headache from the eu with a summons or seizing your bank account because now they done slapped a heavy fine on you for not having a gdpr notice automatically showing on your blog i hope all of this is making sense to you because if it isn't you might have to come back to this video later on and say oh sean did say something about the gdpr I, now that i got my blog up let me go ahead and go over to that site so I can cover myself legally for free for free for free I said it three times okay so that covers that cj.com linkshare.com trade doubler.com commission soup.com those are four high paying affiliate networks I believe that is question number eight I am now moving on to question number nine Oh, wow. An hour and 50. Let's see. This says an hour and 54 minutes on here. This is an hour and 57 minutes. I'm going on two hours. All right, man. <laughs> good, good, good. Like a kid in the Brooklyn candy store. Shout out to Yolo Tech. We're doing it today, baby. They're going to look at this video and be like, that guy's showing us crazy. And I'm just happy. That's happy. I'm just being my natural self on video. <laughs> I'm just, uh, let's see. I feel like, yeah, the GoPro didn't really go up in terms of the temperatures. It is warm. It's warm. It's not really hot, but it's not completely hot, but it's it's warm. Um, okay, so question number nine. Question number nine says... Uh, what are some of the reasons why someone would fail at affiliate marketing because they're not being consistent in putting forth the effort in other words if they start a blog or a YouTube channel and they post one video or one blog a week that's not gonna cut the mustard search engines quietly look for consistency now in Google's search rules they don't point out that consistency improves search engine rankings you may have to view their YouTube channel at Google Talks and catch some of their YouTube videos, whereas you may potentially and occasionally hear a Google employee or some Google employees say, content marketing consistency gets better search engine rankings and it improves affiliate income. You may hear them say that. If you hear that coming from them, that should be your motivation to change from posting one YouTube video and one blog a week to posting one YouTube video a day and one blog post a day, Monday through Friday for the next three years. People, some, fail at affiliate marketing because one, they don't have a comprehensive understanding how affiliate marketing works and they're doing most of the work themselves. See, that's where you really have to hunker down and change the way you think because if you want affiliate marketing to work for you, you have to be all the way in. All the way. There is no straddling the fence. There is no... And I'm talking about me too. I straddled the fence for a long time. I was inconsistent. There was times where I went a month, I month or so. I went a long time. I didn't post content. I didn't I left the YouTube I left one YouTube channel on the table inconsistent for 12 years 
left millions and millions of dollars on the table, was still working jobs, going broke, getting harassed by employees. I'm talking about me, me, because of my inconsistency and lack of understanding and not wanting to be all the way in, vested, vested. Today I'm vested in, I'm all the way in because I have a comprehensive understanding because of my past and current trials and tribulations has affected the way I think. I refuse to lose in affiliate marketing. So I am getting more consistent. Consistency is one of many reasons why people fail in affiliate marketing. Two, number two, um, let me see, number two. They think that they can't do it by themselves, in which it can be done. But you can't do everything at once by yourself when it comes to affiliate marketing. In this line of work, do what you can and do what you can do and feel comfortable doing. Most importantly, work at your own pace. One of the lights from the juice box finally went out. So I guess it's because I finally, let me see, did I pass two hours? I did pass two hours. All right. So yeah, two hours and two minutes. Woohoo! Yes! Thank you. Two hours and two minutes. Man, I'm really banging this thing today. All right. <laughs> the champ is here, baby. Oh man. So let me, I'm just really happy that I'm making a lengthy, lengthy video today. Um, so going forward, um, some of the other reasons, like I said, people will fail. They think they can't do it by themselves. They can. Um, you don't need to have a five person operation to create one blog post a day over a thousand words. You can do that yourself on your phone. So if you think you need five to 10 people to help make affiliate marketing work for you, no. Even though having five to 10 writers would significantly boost income from your blog or YouTube channel by putting out more content, if you can have those people work for you, great, do it. Because the more content you put out, the more money you make. But if you think you need someone in the infancy of your affiliate marketing career to help you make money and you're not moving forward because of that, then that's on you. That's why you're failing. Um, another reason why pe most people fail in affiliate marketing because they're looking for a fast buck. You ain't getting no fast money here. You can just forget that thinking, that stinking thinking is not going to get you nowhere. You ain't going to be no millionaire in affiliate marketing. I can see... Let's say, I want to say, if you really go all the way in and stay consistent for about five years, you could be a millionaire in five years. You could probably be a millionaire in about less than that. But I, I, I just, I want to be realistic. You can earn your first one million in about five years, but you really got to be in. That means leave the reefer alone, leave the alcohol alone. You're going to have to cut friends and family off. No nightclubs. I, man, when I moved out of Brooklyn, I tell you, back in the 90s, my friends had turned me on to Rifa, alcohol, and nightclubs. We used to go to Tillin Ballroom back in the day. I know it don't look like the type of guy because I was a slim fella back in the day. I'm a totally different person today. And back in the day, in Flatbush, when we the party was just starting around 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. Unlike here party shuts down 11 12 o'clock at night you know pole nine is ready to pull up to the club and i don't do clubs anymore i you know when i moved out of brooklyn i did clubs for a little while but then you know i matured and grew out of it but um going to clubs that will kill your pockets and it will leave your energy drained you don't you have very little energy to work on your side hustle creating content for your blog or your website or your youtube channel you're breaking the bank because now you're spending money on alcoholic beverages you're spending money on marijuana um heck you might even spend money on a cab if you go home with, with a female i mean you just you know nightclubs is not worse and plus they're dangerous even back in the 90s when we was going to tilden ballroom in the caribbean dome around the corner from Rasmus Hall, right off of Flappish Avenue, it was still dangerous back then, and we were spending unnecessary money. What do you mean? We were buying Heineken's $5 a bottle in the club, 
and we were underage. We weren't even 18, but we were spending money um, that could have been used for business purposes. But we were young, we were immature, and we had this term. Um, we were dumbing. We would, I mean, son was dumb and big time back in the day. We were, I knew nothing about this affiliate marketing stuff. So, yeah, leave the nightclubs alone because that money that you could, you know, that money that you would traditionally be spending in a nightclub, you can now use that to invest in your side hustle by getting a domain name, by getting a dedicated server, having WordPress installed, and blogging your way to millions of dollars online. So, you're going to have to make some lifestyle changes, definitely. You definitely gonna have to change this if you want affiliate marketing to work for you because remember this affiliate marketing it is the business of you this is your livelihood this is what you're gonna be using to earn a 100% living a affiliate marketing ladies and gentlemen is the transformation business solution to overcoming a traditional nine to five day job this is not just putting a few hundred dollars in your pocket every month this Affiliate marketing can make you a millionaire. I mean, we're talking about paying off debt, buying the kind of cars that you want, getting a Ferrari, a Lamborghini, getting a mansion, but it is what you make of it. Even though there's no guarantees in this line of work, it is what you make of it. And um, if you can cut out the nightclubs, cut out the drinking, cut out buying the reefer, um, eliminate the negative friends, the toxic friends, getting rid of the toxic relationship, whoever you're dating right now, dump them. Dump them straight up because dating costs money okay if you have no intentions of marrying that person leave them alone because um that person cannot help you generate a retirement check that person cannot help you generate passive income so that person is literally a liability and there's a woman nearby me on the phone she's walking her dog and she's allegedly taking little looks over here um yeah she's kind of nice looking but i too wish she would kick rocks and go elsewhere. I don't, I don't like people standing around playing it off on the phone looking at me while I'm making a video. Just get away from me. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a very, uh, in the real world, I'm a private person. I kind of like a private, I'm a private person, just from experience. Um, okay, so that's part of the reasons why I feel some people fail in affiliate marketing. They look forward to earning a fast dollar. They uh, go to nightclubs, and if you go to nightclubs and spend too much money and you have drained energy, guess what? You have no energy to invest in your business, and you have very little money to invest in your business. So cut out the drinking, cut out the reefer, cut out the, the, the dating, cut out the nightclubs, because nightclubs are also a death trap. I mean, in the 1990s, let me just tell y'all real quick, I, growing up in Brooklyn for some whatever reason I was a very peculiar person and there was a cat around in my hood um, if you know him in Flatbush I'm not gonna say his real name but we used to call we call him DJ Cuts or DJ Prodigy from Flatbush Brooklyn he used to live on Brooklyn Avenue and back in elementary school days in the 1980s we used to be cool then I don't I can't remember what happened. We was kids in elementary school. We switched up and ever since then we had bad beef throughout the years until I moved out of Brooklyn. Well all of that's over today because we spoke we spoke once online through uh Facebook. It is dissolved now. But beef was terrible between us back in the day. I mean DJ Cuts Prodigy from Brooklyn Avenue or Flatbush. If you know who I'm talking about, you know who I'm talking about. Sapase Nabule Tikason. Nabule Bidi That's all I'm gonna say. You know what language that is. Ça passe. Tigasson. Si Tigasson still breathing. Oh, oh. Yeah, you know who I'm talking to. But beef was so serious between me and this dude that one day this cat sent one of his one of his boys on my block to slice my face with. I don't know if he had a, a, a razor from underneath his tongue because that's how they used to do it. They put the razor up underneath here. Or if he had a box cutter, but he grabbed, I was riding my bike on my block one day, minding my business, and he, he came on my block by himself, and cats, New York cats will run up on you and do something by themselves. They don't really, they, cats in New York don't always do stuff in crews. Cats got bold, cats was bold, and he got bold, came on my block and grabbed me and went to go slice my face, go, 
and I'm just kind of way I moved. Thank you, Lord Jesus. By the grace of God, the dude missed. This was because I had beef with cuts back in the day. And back in the day when my other friends used to take me to clubs, um, we had to watch the people that was in the clubs because I didn't want to come across DJ Cuts. DJ Cuts is a very famous DJ to this day in Brooklyn. And he's a short dude. And but never mind him being short. He he got mad props. Beef between us was so serious back in the day that there was this club in Manhattan called the Tunnel. And because DJ Cuts had props all around Brooklyn because he's still a famous DJ, he knew a lot of people. God forbid if I would have went with my boys on a train or by the by car to that club, the tunnel in Manhattan, and come across cuts, they see you all the way out here in Manhattan and you far away from Brooklyn, I could have been dead. Cuts no killers. The beef was that serious. I, I still don't remember what caused the beef, but the hatred for me coming from him was really, really serious. And so, I never been to the club. I've never been to the tunnel in Manhattan, even though I'm born and raised in Brooklyn. I'm born in Brooklyn, raised in Flatbush. I never been to the tunnel a day in my life. I've also never been to the Octagon. Uh, if I've been to Club Legend in Brooklyn, I don't remember. I do remember going to the Caribbean Dome across, uh, around the corner from Erasmus Hall. I do remember going to Tilden Ballroom on more than one occasion. Because back in the day, Tilden Ballroom, when you get to the ticket booth, it didn't have a window. You just slip the $20 through. They give you, um, I think they gave you a ticket. And then the security would take a purple, like a purple... Uh, a purple stamp an invisible purple they would take this purple stamp and stamp an invisible stamp on your hand and then they would take like illuminated light every time you came out to the club for a break to get some air or whatever security let them know you're going back in they would take like this little illuminated lamp and they would you know go over your hand and then they would see the invisible stamp that's how they knew you had already paid the money but going to that ticket booth at um, Tilden Ballroom, they didn't have any windows, so you couldn't see the person that was taking your money. You just slip the $20 through, they give you a ticket, I think, and then security puts this invisible stamp on your on your hand like that. So, yeah, I after I moved out of Brooklyn, I really cut down on the, on the night, you know, nightclubs, because it, it, it became a death trap. Like I said, if I would have been in Manhattan at Club Tunnel, and cuts would have came across me with him and his crew because if you if you this is the real giveaway you know who cuts is cuts used to be a part of a crew back in the day called pbs and the leader of the crew his his tag was dinka he dinka is a famous graffiti writer to this very day and dinka was the head the hnic of this crew called pbs and cuts was in that crew pbs now i just gave away who cuts is so i'm still not gonna say his name but I'm glad because of that experience of knowing I couldn't go to any club I wanted in New York City that I really didn't have a fetish for going to clubs. So um, I that kind of altered my thinking that I need to get serious about life and focus on business and not really delve into being seen at clubs and being pretty and trying to get the girls because I done already been there and done it online getting all the women. I, I did that already. I have to move on and mature as a man and build my business because dating women is not going to get me passive income nor a retirement check. I got to do my own business and build my business. So when you change this and eliminate a lot of the fluff, the nightclubs, the drinking, the smoking, the dating, the sweaty, uh, the sweaty, um, me and my former friend Miguel, we used to have what we call the skeet call. We used to go skeet, 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 and I recently heard it from someone else, but this person went skeet, 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 skeet. when you eliminate the skeet, 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 that will help you um, that will help you get more sleep and have more energy toward retaining and build I said retaining that will help you have more energy 
toward creating content for your blog, website, and YouTube channel when you stay away from the stay away from that because that's that's fornication. That's fornication when you're dating and doing that. That's fornication. Yeah, you're fornicating because you're not married and you're putting a lot of energy into that, and it's not profitable. It's only profitable to the flesh, but it's not profitable to your pockets. Are you getting what I'm trying to tell you? All right. So that answers that. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's question number nine. This camera is still going. Wow. I'm now on two hours. This that says two hours and five minutes. This says two hours and 18 minutes. I'm still going. Whew. I'm loving this, man. Okay, so when I'm now on to question number 10. Question number 10. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do all 17. It's starting to, the sun is starting to go down. Let me see what time it is. It's wow, it's 7:33 p.m. on Friday, May 20th, 2022. Okay, question number 10. Question number 10 says, how do I start affiliate marketing if I have no websites? Okay, how do I start affiliate marketing if I have no websites? The response to that question, go back to the beginning of this video and review question number one. How can I generate website traffic with zero marketing budget? I'm just gonna keep it, I'm gonna give a short, shorty answer to that one. Go back to question number one, and that is how you can do affiliate marketing with no websites. YouTube, TikTok, Pinterest. Your camera phone. Go back to question number one. I'm gonna include some chapters in the YouTube description of this video. All you have to do is take your computer mouse and just go and click on it. Go back to question number one and hopefully that'll answer. All right, so now I am going on to question number 11. Question number 11. Where can I post my affiliate links for free? Before I answer this question thoroughly, I'm gonna make it real quick because the sun is going down and I wanna wrap this up because I have 17 questions and I'm on number 11 and I'm gonna make this quick and fast. Posting your affiliate links for free, you can post affiliate links for free in the video description section of every YouTube video you upload to your channel. But, whatever you do, you can also post affiliate links in forums as signatures. Whatever you do, do not comment on blogs. Do not comment on blogs and leave affiliate links as the URL address. For fear, someone may report you to that advertiser that you are allegedly spamming. Don't do that if you do that be mindful not to write a one or two sentence blog comment and don't sound general and vague if you do that I would not recommend posting a raw affiliate link to a blog comments section because of the fear someone could report you for suspected spamming. If you do that, you want to be mindful to leave a meaningful blog comment. So in other words, take time to at least write a 200 word natural comment in your own words with your own feelings. I feel, I believe, make it personal. So this way, no one doesn't think that you are writing just to generate a, a, a traffic to the affiliate link. Write in your own personal opinion in a blog comment how you felt about what you read in that blog post. That's a good way of posting an affiliate link for free. But again, do not do that often. Please don't 
don't don't because not only can someone suspect you and report you for alleged spamming but if that particular affiliate program is paying let's say 20 25 30 percent starting out commission to their affiliates i mean from jump street that is not the type of affiliate program that you want to promote as an affiliate link in a blog comment so let's say for example i'm just going to throw a parable Let's say you're an affiliate of Priceline.com. You're a Priceline.com affiliate. You know people love to travel. And let's say for an example, I'm just throwing as an example. I'm not saying that they are. Let's say for example, allegedly Priceline.com is paying affiliates 25% affiliate commission starting out on all travel, hotel, and rental car packages. No matter what you sell through your affiliate link, you are getting 25% of that. So in other words, if you sell, if someone clicks on your affiliate link and makes a purchase and purchases a $2,500 round trip vacation package, they got the round trip airfare, they got the hotel for a week, and they got a rental truck or a rental economy car, whatever the case is, but everything comes to $2,500, right? Okay. Um, excuse me. 25%. Okay. Of that sale, let's say $2,500. $2,500. What is 10% of 2,500? That's 250. Another 10%? That's 250. Right? 5% of that is half of the 250. That's 125. You have earned yourself $625 off of one sale. Imagine if you can do that one day, every day for 30 days. In addition to your AdSense affiliate income, your all of your, you see what I'm saying? It all adds up. So you don't want to mess up that income stream by leaving those affiliate links as blog comments. You definitely, definitely don't want to do that. This is why I dearly recommend do not post affiliate links and blog comments. Go rogue and pro promote affiliate links in YouTube video description sections. Yes because video drives immediate traffic and you can drive affiliate income with zero marketing budget using video and affiliate links and your camera phone that doesn't require no money that's all you creativity and effort so promote your affiliate links through YouTube videos you can also promote your affiliate links through Facebook groups and Facebook fan pages now we'll tell you this promote your affiliate links gladly through your own Facebook group so in other words don't go and join someone else's Facebook group and they got a hundred thousand members in that Facebook group and you're continually posting affiliate links somebody people will do it for no reason they will hate on you and report you for spamming so if you're using someone's Facebook group to promote affiliate links stop doing that because people automatically hate that's their nature they will report you and you don't want to mess up that relationship with that advertiser, especially if they're paying starting affiliates with 25% affiliate commission, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't want no problems, man. You don't, you don't want to be on no list. You don't, you don't want to be blackballed by that advertiser because they heard something from somebody that you're spamming or that you're promoting affiliate links and they don't. And that person saw your affiliate links and they feel, they feel some kind of way. Oh, shut up. Oh, shut up. Mind your business, Daniel Lane. Stop stitching. All right, so that's that. That's question number 11. All right, now I'm on to question number 12. Question number 12. Question number 12 comes from Tad Stevens. And Tad asks, what should I start first as a beginner? Blogging or affiliate marketing? Um, I would say start blogging first. The reason why is because 
when you apply for affiliate networks, especially Google AdSense, they want to see that you're already blogging. They want to already see that you're moving forward without them. They want to see that you're doing something. In other words, they don't. They don't. They want to see that you're not what we call a lazy affiliate or stale affiliate. St steady, stale or lazy affiliates. They're like the do nothing affiliates. They start a blog, start a website, a YouTube channel, and then they don't. They don't consistently create content. They just create it and just say, "Oh, I have something. Just go ahead and put me in the program." And. Uh, you don't want to be those type of people. So start blogging. And as I always mention, start out blogging with a thousand word blog posts. Keep going. This is going on two and a half hours. <laughs> it's working. Yes, sir. All right. I just had to do one of them yesterday real quick. I know you haven't heard me do that in a long time. But uh, hey, um, you definitely want to start blogging while you're in the process of waiting for your publisher approval keep creating content i don't care if they take two or three months to get back to you you keep going because blogging is the business of you and blogging is one of many ways that you can become an online millionaire and completely independent from your day job so um, get started with blogging first and then while you're blogging you have a couple of posts up you know maybe after 5,000 words go ahead and um, start applying for some affiliate networks and especially apply for Google AdSense that is the easiest money anyone can make and by the way it's shout out to Google shout out to AdSense thank you yes sir hi Google yes sir <laughs> All right, so get started with that blog. And remember, blog faithfully because you're not going to make a full-time income for your first year, year and a half. So just keep going, okay? Create content. You want to get this mindset creating consistent content. Once you get the content marketing, mental algorithm, the mindset down pat, man, the world is your oyster. All right? So that is question number 12. Moving on now to question number 13. Question number 13 I'm almost done question number 13 says does the Bluehost affiliate program work absolutely I'm a Bluehost affiliate and as a matter of fact the first affiliate link that you see in this YouTube video description section is an affiliate link to Bluehost now in my about section of this YouTube channel I do have my FTC affiliate disclaimer so I no longer copy and paste it into my YouTube videos if you want to see my YouTube uh, affiliate link disclaimer just go ahead on over to the about section and you'll notice that I included it in the about section Bluehost affiliate program has very affordable web hosting services. I believe they start as low as $2 and 95 cents a month. I mean, who doesn't want hosting for about rounded up to $3 a month? I mean, you have no reason not to get a domain name and dedicated hosting. Does the Bluehost affiliate program work? You betcha because people are buying affordable hosting and when you promote Bluehost as an affiliate and you drive sales, do you know Bluehost starts out affiliates with I believe allegedly $65 a sale? You can generate one sale a day from your Bluehost affiliate link, do $65 times 30 days. Whatever the answer is, that's what you can get. If you generate one sale a day for the entire month, that's what you get. I know with some Bluehost affiliates, they earn between 20 and 30 grand a month. That's just off of one affiliate program. And that's a part of multiple streams of income. So yes, the affiliate program does work. All right, this is moving on to question number 14. Question, I'm sorry, question number 14. I have, to wrap, I have to hurry up and shorten these answers. How do I earn the most affiliate money as a beginner? By not focusing on making money. You cannot focus on making money in the beginning of your affiliate marketing career because you will become discouraged. Let's say you just started out as affiliate. Next month, month number two, I wanna make $3,000 in affiliate marketing. Forget about it, you ain't getting no three grand. <laughs> no, you're not. It's you have this is not this is get rich slow not get rich overnight get rich slow this ain't the stock market this is affiliate marketing you have to put in the work and it takes time getting rich takes time
time. You have to learn some patience. So don't focus on the money, focus on creating content. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Okay, moving on. Question number 15. Let me see, five, six, yeah. Question number 15, okay. Question number 15 says, what can someone do to be successful on affiliate? Dedicate yourself to this line of work. There are no guarantees of earning one red cent. You have to want to do this. You have to want it. You have to want it. It's just like a, a, the boy chases the girl. If the boy really wants the girl, she's gonna, you know, already, he already knows she's gonna reject him in the beginning. That rejection is just, that, that's a natural thing. Everybody goes through nature. I'm, I'm sorry, everyone goes through rejection by nature. And that includes me. I have been rejected many times in dating, in business, uh, employment. You have to keep going. If you really want something or someone, you will be consistent and go after it. That's all I have to say. End of answer for question number 15. Moving on. Question number 16. Question number 16, now this is a work-related question. Can an employer terminate employment due to ill health? You have to consult with a lawyer about that because if, they, if you get wrongfully terminated, if you're not able to come to the job and perform the job-related functions, then obviously, I mean, in my personal opinion, the employer does have the right to terminate you because you're not able to perform the job-related functions and you're still on the payroll. So the employer's going to look at it as, why am I paying you for if you can't do the job? And then you're going to turn around and take workers' comp or claim disability or something, you know, they're, they're likely going to terminate you, but you want to consult with a lawyer on that, okay? That's the end of answer for number 16. Last question. Question number 17. Last one. Question number 17 comes from Mattis Rogers. Mattis asks, um, okay, there's a two-part question here. Actually, there's question number 18. I'm sorry. It's question. This is not the last question. This is uh, question number 17. There's one more after this, and then I'm finished. I'm sorry. So that's correct. What are the best ways to do content marketing? Let me go back to the beginning. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. That is question. Um, okay, so that was originally question number two. So I'm going to skip over that. And then, yes, this is question number 17. This is the last one. The last question says, and I have to hurry up, the sun is going down. The last question says, what would be your biggest motivation to quit your job and start your own business? Knowing that I can outfox my employer when they deny me a pay raise, or I can outfox my employer when um, they do mergers and offer me less pay by using affiliate marketing as a means of earning a full-time living. Affiliate marketing and going through workplace-related adversity would be my biggest motivations to quit my job and start my own business. And as a matter of fact, I did join the Great Resignation Era. I was on a job where I was being offered a certain amount an hour, and then they turned around and the company was doing a merger. I received the retention notice for continued employment and I had already received my name tags in which I wasn't required to go into the office, maybe once a month or once a week or something like that. But um, I had received my name tag in the mail. And I received a name tag in the mail after I walked off the job, after I quit. But when the companies were merging, I received a retention for employment letter and in the body of the retention letter, they quoted a certain hourly pay that I disagree with. Now, I have a bachelor's degree in marketing. I graduated from Wilmington University with a 3.5 GPA. There is no way I'm going to work for a certain amount of money. I don't care how bad I needed the job at the moment. I just have standards. I leveled up. I matured. My thinking has changed. So regardless that I needed a job in that moment, they offered me an unsatisfactory pay because the companies were merging and they were offering almost three dollars less then that meant that i was taking i was going to be willing to take over a 200 pay cut to, to keep my job well i quit the job 
I walked off gracefully. I got my last two paychecks, direct deposit. I gave them back their equipment, and that was it. And I just kept going. That's it. Use workplace-related adversity. If your boss is not acting right towards you, if you're being humiliated, denied a pay raise, denied a company uh, promotion, that should be part of your biggest motivation to quit your job and start your own business. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up and say thank you all so much for your precious time watching this video. If you haven't already um, subscribed to this channel, please feel free to tap the red subscribe button and to also help me in the YouTube algorithm. I dearly encourage you to please click the like button. That would help me very much with the YouTube algorithm and I thank you so much in advance for it. All right, hopefully this um, video, you got something out of it. And this is my first YouTube video that I have filmed that is going toward two hours and 40 minutes. And I am completely blown away by the great results that I am getting from the juice box. Let me, let me actually feel this out. This juice box is not even warm. I'm telling you, it is nowhere near warm. I don't feel any heat at all. Nothing. Nada. Let me see how the GoPro feels. Now the camera is a little warm in the back. I'm touching the glass screen in the back covered by plastic. And the camera is very warm. It is not at the point of shutting off yet. I, can, I, I just, I believe because the camera is outside, it is breathing. It's not in a building or a closed office, closed door office. I think that's part of the reason why this camera is still going. I am just so happy I made the investment and bought the juice box. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed me hearing me flap my gums Brooklyn style on here. I look forward to bringing you more content. Now coming up in the next video, I am going to rehash the video discussing Listerine because I did not like when I saw parts of that video, I noticed that there were, um, I didn't have the ND filter. I still have the brand new GoPro, um, the Polar Pro ND filters in the box. I've never used them. And some of the ND filters actually filter out the sunlight. So I noticed because I had the, stand, the standard lens on in the video discussing the Listerine that part of the sunlight wasn't making, was making the video look a little funny to me. So what I want to do is in the next video, I'm going to rehash why it's necessary for affiliate marketers to wear man bags or messenger bags to affiliate marketing events and have Listerine in the bag. Believe it or not, having Listerine with you can actually increase your profit potential when you are negotiating an affiliate commission percentage face to face with an advertiser at affiliate marketing events. So I will get into that again in the next video. In the meantime, sun's going down i'm gonna shut this baby off and let the camera cool down even though it didn't shut off for me i am very very pleased yolo tech juice box you guys did a fantastic job i got to give you a round of applause with this amazing juice box and the 256 gig memory card i am getting the results now that i want and i Look forward to kicking out more YouTube videos in the near future of two hours and more. This is now two hours and 42 minutes and even though it, the camera didn't shut off because now the camera is getting a little warm, I'm going to shut it off. So again, this is Sean with Side Hustle Inspiration where I inspire good working class people to change the history of your human thought process and going from employee to full-time online entrepreneur by adapting to the side hustle mindset. Thank you so much again and please remember on the way out the door to smash the like button that would help the YouTube algorithm push my videos up higher in search results. Thank you, Sean, over and out. Peace.